All right, guys, uh, let's begin and we'll sign ourselves. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. So I will read all the parts, but please do read the sections which say all at home, okay? All right, let's go. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it done to me unto, unto me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. For forth we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace unto our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel, May by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to take a few moments to prepare our hearts for praise and worship. And um, after praise and worship, uh, we will move on to the input session and announcements and uh, the closing prayer. So we're looking at about 35 to 40 minutes. All right, so hope that you stay with us all the way through. So let's take that moment of silence now. Uh, all right, today to lead us into praise and worship is Gustav. All right. Hey, everyone. So good to see all of you guys logging on. And this is my first virtual praise and worship. 
And um, just before we start, I'd like to um, like to just recommend wherever you are, just just have a, um, make sure that you're in front of a of, of an image of our Lord or a crucifix, and and you know with a lit candle, and so that we can all uh, pray together in as one family. And uh, before we we do so, you will all, although you'll be mute, um, I invite you to sing along with the songs that we will be singing here, yeah? The words will be on the slides that you will see where, when they come up. So let's, let's just, um, I invite you to close your eyes wherever you are. And let us call upon the Holy Spirit to fill us right now to, to pray together, even though we're so far apart from each other. It is the Spirit who connects us all. And even as we call upon the Holy Spirit, we ask him by his power, his, his magnificent power, to transport each of us, each of us here, each of us listening, to transport us to the tomb of our Lord, on this being Holy Saturday as we make our vigil together before his tomb, let us say, come, Holy Spirit, we need you. Come, Holy Spirit, we need you. Come, Holy Spirit, we need you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for being present at the very mention of your name. Thank you, Lord, for being in us, even at our worst times. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Come, fill us, enlighten us. I thought we'd take our first song, which is Meet Us Here. And even as we are here meditating before the tomb. You can meditate on this image as well, the icon of the Sacred Heart. For at the end of all of this, it's all about love. It is all about the love of God. And it is the very essence of who God is. His love for you, His love for me. His love is what kept the nails in his hands. It's what kept him on the cross. So meet us here, Lord, even as we are here before you. Even as we wait with you for your glorious resurrection, meet us here. Praises we lift 
lift our hearts and our hands to the King of all the ages. Hear us, Lord, we pray. Come, Jesus, come. Come, come fill the space. Meet us here. strong when you surround us meet us here meet us here meet us here meet us here oh Lord as we gather in your name meet us here as we Thank you, Lord, for being here with us. One of the beautiful things I heard from, a, from Bishop Barron's homily on Good Friday is over time, the very symbol of what the cross is has, has, lost, has lost its message of absolute terror. Because in, in the olden times, in Roman times, the crucifixion was one of the ultimate tortures that the Romans could inflict on one. It was in fact one of their nuclear weapons in a sense. It showed the world not to mess with the Romans. And that was the very thing that they did to our Lord. <coughs> Inflicted the worst possible kind of torture which involved excruciating pain and humiliation. The very word excruciating comes from the word cross. Our Lord endured so much far beyond what we can imagine because he was fully God and fully man, not stained by original sin. And therefore operating on a much higher level than all of us and therefore experiences like pain on a completely different level. So let us reflect on this. Let us be aware of ourselves before the cross, before the tomb. Let there be no guilt, but remorse. Let there be no fear, but just trust in his love. Trust that Jesus died on the cross even while we were sinners. And he therefore has a beautiful plan for us even now, should we choose him. We'll reflect on this as we take our next song above all. Oh 
trampled on the ground. You took the fall, the Lord, and thought of me. It's your love for me that kept you on the cross. And I praise you even now, Lord. Praise you. Praise you and thank you for your love. Praise you, Lord, for, for thinking the world of me. Praise you, Lord, for loving me, even when I just cannot bring myself to love myself.
praise you, Lord, for being closer to me than I am to myself, for looking out, out for me, even when I've strayed away. Thank you, Lord, and praise you. Our meditating on the passion of our Lord is not to guilt us into, a, into changing our life. It is the love of our Lord that will change us. It is the love of our Lord that will have its transforming power in us. Let us take it seriously. Let us meditate on his love. And the more we meditate on his love, we will understand, we we'll begin to understand what his mercy is. The love that kept the author of life from the cross is the same as his mercy for us. Today is the second day of the Novena to the Divine Mercy. And I invite you all to, to start it, start the Novena, or start praying the chaplet from now on. Let us immerse ourselves in the very ocean of his mercy. Let us offer up, even now, the parts of us that are not of him. Let us offer up to him our shortcomings, our failures, our failures to love. Let us trust in his mercy. We will take that song, Lord have mercy on us. And even as we take this song, let us be confident that he waits for us to ask him of his mercy. Let us be confident that he will shower his mercy on us without, without holding back. Have mercy. 
invite you to remain with the Lord and allow him to love you and even as we are meditating on him on his love for us Let us reflect on what Adam and Eve may have felt watching the Son of God come down to earth as one of his own creations, endure a lifetime of struggle, only to be put to death on a cross. If you were Adam, or if you were Eve, how would you feel? How would you face Jesus? I would like to read from an ancient homily on Jesus's death and resurrection. And it is quite apt for today being Holy Saturday. What is happening? Today, there is a great silence over the earth, a great silence and stillness a great silence because the king sleeps. The earth was in terror and was still because God slept in the flesh and raised up those who were sleeping from the ages. God has died in the flesh and the underworld has trembled. Truly, he goes to seek out our first parent like a lost sheep. He wishes to visit those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death. He goes to free the prisoner, Adam, and his fellow prisoner, Eve, from their pains, he who is God and Adam's son. The Lord goes into them holding his victorious weapon, his cross, but Adam, the first created man, sees him. He strikes his breast in terror and calls out to all, My Lord be with you all. And Christ, in reply, says to Adam, And with your spirit. And grasping his hand, he raises him up, saying, Awake! O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give you light. I am your God, who for your sake became your son. Who for you and your descendants now speak and command with authority those in prison. Come forth, and those in darkness have light, and those who sleep, rise. I command you, awake, sleeper. I have not made you to be held a prisoner in the underworld. Arise from the dead. I am the life of the dead. Arise, O man, work of my hands. Arise, you who were fashioned in my image. Rise, let us go hence. For you in me and I in you, together 
we are one undivided person. Let us allow our hearts to give thanks to the Lord. To give thanks for this undeserving gift that is Jesus. Because in him, even now during this time of quarantine, when everything is uncertainty, in him we are victorious. In him let the poor say I am rich. Let the weak say I am strong. Give thanks. Mm -hmm. Praise you that we can worship you and adore you even now, wherever we are. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Thank you and praise you. Mother Mary, pray for us. O Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee. Amen. Thank you, Gustav, for your wonderful praise and worship. Uh, how is everyone doing? Um, I hope you're having a blessed uh, I hope you're having a, be a blessed uh, Holy Week. Hi, there I am. Um, okay, so um, what we're going to do is we just finished praise and worship. Uh, we uh, unfortunately are not doing uh, Speak for Jesus and uh, welcoming newcomers uh, because it's not an interactive meeting. We're still learning. It's our first meeting, so bear with us. Um, so we're going to go into our input session, and uh, with that, I will hand it over back to Gustav. Um, we are running a little over than expected, uh, but uh, we uh, probably uh, finish in about um, 
20 minutes. So I will now hand it over to Gustav. All right. Okay, I think you guys can hear me now. Um, so, hi again, and if you are still here, thank you. And um, we are going to go into our Hitman session. And one, one of the things I thought, uh, as we were discussing you know, how we were going to put this together, is um, uh, what, what, what would be appropriate for us during this quarantine time. Okay, and um, so what I'm going to present to you is how to, how to live a life of integrity. Um, and this is by the notes this is from the notes of Father Mike Schmitz, and he recently did this in a virtual Catholic conference that was held, I think, last weekend. So um, we'll go to our first slide, and I hope you guys can see this. Ah, there we go. So how to maintain integrity during quarantine. So um, Father Mike Smith, uh, uh, if, if, if you've not heard of Father Mike Smith, he's a very amazing um, uh, preacher. And he, his, 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 um, his content, his, his messages are quite apt for the world that we live in. So one of the first things uh, he wanted to um, put forward to us in this, in this um, Catholic conference was um, uh, the differences between men and women, where he said that men tend to be very passive when it comes to responsibilities and women tend to be in control. It's, it's like, it's almost the story of every couple that we've ever known, you know, before, before uh, getting married, it's, it's pretty much the honeymoon period most of the time. And, um, and then just after you get married, there's a honeymoon phase again, and then life takes over. And then the, the husband tends to take a back seat and let the wife kind of take control of everything because she wants to. And then, you know, then it all, it kind of, um, degrades into, oh, he, he's a good for nothing. And, oh, she's always nagging, that sort of thing. But one of the, one of the things, uh, that we ought to realize that is that we as men ought to, uh, Karen, can you go to the next slide? Uh, we as men ought to next. reject passivity and embrace responsibility, all right? And uh, with women, it should not be they reject control and embrace passivity, although that would be awesome, um, no. Women should let go of control and maintain responsibility, all right? So that ought to be, in a nutshell, living a life of integrity. But I thought we'd go, uh, go a little further and start mapping out um, a roadmap, as it were, to how this life would look, all right? So in the next slide, Let's, let's think about this question. Am I spending my time effectively now that I have more time than ever before? All right. And, and further to that question, uh, Caroline, next slide. Uh, on a scale of one to 10, how seriously do I take the, the fact that I have access to the father through his son? The whole point of Lent and the whole point of uh, reflecting on his death and resurrection is to understand this amazing truth that God is now with now closely integrated with mankind through his son. So it, in, with that being uh, with that in mind, have I been able to seriously take control of that? Because up until this point, up until the time of this quarantine, it was all about Oh, I don't have time. I'm at work all the time. Or the kids have got this activity, that activity. And, or, you know, on my own, I've got too many things to do. So on a scale of one to 10, take about maybe about 30 seconds. Think about it. Reflect on that. Have a good hard look about uh, at, at your life and 
say on a scale of one to 10, how much of the Lord have I had access to of, or how much of the Lord I've spent time with, all right? So take that time now. So how did we do? If you're above five, that's great. That's that's awesome. You did take steps to spend more time with the Lord. If you're below five, that's not a problem. It's we're we're just looking at our lives to know where we are right now. Okay. So let me put out a roadmap right now for the the life of uh, to to lead a life of integrity. Next slide. It's a quote by Seneca. It is not that we have a short space of time to live, but that we may we waste ma much of it. Next slide. So the first point would be to have a master goal. Who do I want to be? And in that master goal, you would you would need to really reflect, like for instance, if you're a husband or a, or a wife, like what kind of a husband would I want to be? Or what kind of a father I'd want to be? Or what kind of a individual I'd want to be? All right, what, what do I really want to be? And then the next point would be make your decisions based on that goal. Because our decisions determine whether that goal will be in hand, whether we will be successful in our goal. And then formulate a vision to that goal because a vision shapes our decisions. It fine tunes whatever decisions we make in our life. Next, renew your commitment because it's all very well doing the goal. It's all very well making the, uh, making the vision. But the, the challenge is, is to keep committing to that goal, to that vision. Renew it daily and even hourly. So you might have days, you might have times where you've fallen off the tracks and, and then by some, by, by some grace, you, 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 re you remember that you made a goal, you made a vision. So as soon as you remember that, renew it, renew your commitment uh, to that goal. All right, um, next. And remember that don't dwell on the past. Don't dwell on the fact that you've fallen off the bandwagon. Don't, don't dwell on it because you're wasting that much time. Just say, this is just, just, just accept you are human. You've, you are a, you're a fallen being and all you need to do is accept that and move on. Renew your commitment. Don't dwell on the fact that you've fallen again. Even if you've, even if you've fallen a hundred times in the same day, just move on. Renew, make, make each commitment a new, uh, energetic commitment to, to your goal. And now we will look at the Catholic, um, uh, the Catholic person's roadmap. Next. So the first, if you look at the first point, have a master goal, who do I want to be? The goal of every Catholic man or Catholic woman is to become like Jesus. That is our goal. All right. So you therefore you make your decisions based on the goal and our decisions determine the success of our goal. So how would you do that? How would you become like Jesus? By simply reading the Gospels. Read the Gospels, read between the lines of the Gospels if you really want to study who Jesus is. Pick one of his teachings. One, one of the best places to look is the, the Beatitudes. Look at the Beatitudes or look at the Sermon on the Mount where he, he, he says something as simple as if love your enemies, do good to those who harm you. If you were to even take that one thing, one teaching and live by it, shape all your decisions around that, 
you would know you you would you would start to live the person that Jesus is. Yeah, you would start to understand who Jesus is. So you make your decisions based on reading the Gospels. Okay, next slide. Again. So, and follow up to that, you make a vision to that goal, that goal to become like Jesus. And how do you do that? You read the lives of the saints. How did others before you manage that? Okay, you discover the journey of many saints who they started from, they started as sinners. Every saint has had a sinful past. Yeah, so you look at what they did. Many of them struggled with pretty much the same thing that we struggle with today. If you read them, read their lives, study their lives, study their autobiographies, study everything about those saints. And now in this day and age, we have so many resources. If you think reading a book is not for you, look up little tidbits, little clips about the saints, little fun facts about the saints to whet your appetite, to want to get deeper into his or her life. So when you read into, uh, into the lives of the saints, let their lives, let their struggles inspire you to shape your vision. Like that's the person I want to be. So this is what I need to do. This is, these are the circumstances in which, I, in which that saint lived his, his or her life. That those are the circumstances I want to make for myself, you know, so we get into the vision more deeply. Next. And when you're making your vision, remember your life is not about you. It's not about how much you've attained. Because at the end of life, my dear brothers and sisters, the Lord is not going to ask you about your accomplishments. He's going to ask you how much you loved. It is all about how much you loved. So, Remember that your life is not about you. Remember this when you form your uh, vision. Then renew your commitment to the goal. Remember that what is past is past. The just man falls seven times a day. Don't beat yourself too much. Yeah, Be remorseful. Be sorry for your sins. Sorry for your shortcomings. Resolve to to make a good confession every time you feel you've fallen off your goal or your vision and renew your commitment. Yeah. The Lord looks at your heart. He doesn't look at your accomplishments again. He looks at your heart. He looks at your disposition. He looks at how willing you are to want his mercy. And that is the same, same case here. When I spoke about the, the mercy, the divine mercy of our Lord, and the, we are, we are, the, the novena to the divine mercy is ongoing. You've got to want his mercy. The Lord doesn't want to, inf doesn't want to uh, kind of overwhelm you with things that you don't already want. Your heart has got to be in the right place, in the right disposition to want his mercy. And that, that is an act of humility. Acknowledging that, Lord, I am nothing. I really am nothing. I can't even pray. I can't even make proper prayers to you. I need you. I need you to have mercy on me. I need you to carry me. So it is, it is an act of the will of the person who wants his mercy. And whatever it is, whatever happens in this entire uh, life, in this entire journey that you set yourself out on, do not stop saying yes to Jesus. Many of us at the Come Alive have the same story to share. That throughout the years that we've been at the Come Alive, we never stop saying yes. And it would be small yeses, small yeses like um, just being there for a person who's just walked in for the first time in the room, or setting out the chairs, or, or setting up the equipment, or, or just instead of just leaving after the meeting, just being there for somebody who might be lonely, just being there. Just these little, little yeses is what, what leads to a big yes to the Lord. And that is ultimately being with him in eternity. Next slide. So make an effort, effort even as you're forming your decisions, even as you're making your vision, this would be a good time for you to think about, just like we did earlier on a scale of one to 10, where am I with the Lord? Make an effort to, to, to really write down and figure out what is stopping me from doing this, making my goal to be like Jesus, 
making my vision towards that goal? What is stopping me? Could be tele, it could be excessive uh, TV watching, it could be an addiction, it could be anything. Yeah, but make sure that you write it and then factor it into your will, into, sorry, into your vision. In your vision, you will, you will be able to, you will be able to know that this is the kind of person I want to be and this is what's stopping me and therefore these are the circumstances I need to make for myself to make that vision possible. And ultimately, if you, if you go to see, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago and the second best time is now. So forget what is the, done, forget that you've lost opportunities in the past. The Lord has given you this time now. And that is ultimately how you would be able to live a life of integrity. So again, just to, just to summarize everything that, uh, that, I, uh, that I've shared um, from my uh, Father Mike Schmidt. So make a goal. And the goal of every Catholic uh, human being, every Christian, is to be like Jesus. Make, make your decisions around that goal. Yeah, shape your decisions around making sure that you go in that direction. And that would, that would work by reading the Gospels, understanding who Jesus is, understanding the person of Jesus. Make a vision to that goal. Read the lives of the saints. Understand their struggles. Understand how they overcame them with the Lord. And renew your commitment every day. Renew your commitment, even if it is hourly, just renew your commitment and identify areas that would stop you from making this goal. And in all that is said and done, start now. Don't wait for tomorrow. Yeah. So I hope that this, this has been helpful to you um, all sitting at home or wherever you are. And uh, I do wish you a happy and holy Easter. God bless. Ah, hello, hey. Um, thank you, uh, Gustav. Hello, there I am. All right, excellent. Oh, okay. So we're almost done. Where we're getting there? I have to do announcements. So, um, the the first one is the hashtag CCC challenge. And I know what you're thinking, uh, Catechism of the Catholic Church, but no, you're wrong. So it is Creative Catholic in COVID nineteen, and so what we want um, from you is. Um, we're going to give you a song and you're going to take the chorus of that song and you're going to make it your own. So if you sing, sing. Um, if you play an instrument, play an instrument. If you do interpretive dance, dance. Okay. So just be as creative as you can. And um, see, listen, God has given us all these talents and we're, we're holding it in. So don't feel shy. Just make the video whether you're singing on key, off key, it doesn't matter because you're doing it for the Lord, all right? So make the video, post it on your social media. You can post on Instagram or Facebook. And when you do that, um, add the hashtag creative Catholic in COVID-19, hashtag C-A-Y-G 25, all right? And then if you can tag us at C-A-Y-G underscore Dubai. So, um, you will see all our social media handles coming up at the end. Uh, just uh, take a screenshot so you will have them with you. All right. And we're really looking forward to receiving um, all your videos and your art and your however, however you want to express yourself. So your challenge this week is to take the course of open the eyes of our heart, Lord. All right. So uh, we look forward to your videos and uh, what you also need to do is nominate two people. So I'd suggest nominate someone close to you and then nominate someone who is in your friend circle, uh, uh, but maybe uh, in your home country or um, uh, may, may not know what come alive is. Maybe, they, maybe this uh, might give them life. All right. So that's announcement number one. Number two. Um, hey. So the core team, um, 
uh, tries to do adoration. Now it's a little difficult because of um, this whole COVID-19 situation, but we still pray. And if you have any intentions, uh, please do either email us at uh, canvas, C-A-N-V-A-S dot C-A-Y-G at gmail.com. Or you can WhatsApp me and uh, my number is not on that screen, but I will tell you it is plus 971. <laughs> okay, so UAE codes 507093113. Um, it should be on all the social medias too, so don't worry about that. All right, uh, I'm sure you're wondering about the next live meeting. Yes, so what we want first is your feedback. So I need you to go on all our socials, whether you're on Facebook or Instagram or you want to email us or however. Um, send us your feedback so that we know how um, we can uh, better uh, ourselves. And uh, once you do that, you have to subscribe, like, and share. And if you do that, then you will find out when our next meeting is, all right? Because we will post it. Um, the last thing is uh, we hope that uh, uh, you will uh, be attending Easter Vigil Mass today uh, in the comfort of your house. Um, so the next one for UAE is St. Joseph's uh, Cathedral in Abu Dhabi. It's at 8 p.m. And then... Um, Easter Vigil with the, with the Holy Father in the Vatican at 11 p.m. And that you can go to um, their YouTube page. Uh, but I would pick the one which says English, so you get the English translation. Okay, so we got through the announcements. Uh, and uh, now uh, we will close the meeting with uh, the Marian prayer. So um, please do uh, say aloud uh, at home uh, with us, all right? So together we pray. Mary, we ask you to bless this group. Keep it safe in your immaculate heart. Make come alive our true home, a refuge for the poor in spirit that they may find here the source of all life, a refuge for those who are severely tried that they may be ceaselessly consoled. Mary, give us hearts that are humble and to welcome with kindness and gentle compassion all those whom you send us. Give us hearts full of mercy to love them, to serve them, to extinguish all discord and to see in our suffering brother and sister the living presence of Jesus. Lord, bless us from the hands of the poor. Lord, Smile on us through the eyes of the poor. Lord, receive us one day in the company of your poor. Amen. Um, okay. Uh, so, from all of us that come alive, the co team and the past and present uh, members and uh, our families and extended families. Uh, we'd like to wish you an early happy Easter. I know we're still on, uh, on Holy Saturday, but we may not get a chance to say this tomorrow. So uh, happy Easter and God bless. Bye.